also I just want to give us a, a quick shout out to to Jcell. Jcell is has been like absolutely amazing at handling everything and um so just thank you Jcell. I really appreciate you for that. But anyhow, I've been in touch with a guy. I don't remember if I've mentioned this, but I've been in touch with a guy who operated the first hydrogen station in California since 2016. Um he he operated it for it was for a university it was built with five million dollars of taxpayer money and toyota so so he called me he saw the class action that i filed a long time ago and he called me with information saying that he's like we have to talk we have to meet so i went to his house in pasadena and we met we had a long conversation and i'm going to have a follow-up meeting with him this monday or tuesday at his house again he's retired he's also a lawyer super credible and he's been giving me the most insane details of what toyota did back in 2016 to thwart a taxpayer hydrogen station so a station that you guys paid for with your tax dollars and i'm not talking about rich people taxes over here okay i'm talking about the dmv registration fees like they upped that by a couple a couple bucks to pay for this kind of stuff so you guys paid for this hydrogen station and toyota blocked it from being used by the public until late in the 2020s until 2021 they blocked it um by by basically not a lot they said that they wouldn't let your cards uh work there they wouldn't reimburse people so they had total market control uh of the fuel right because they controlled the method of payment that you guys were relegated to make. And then they also controlled where you guys could distribute that payment. So there's a, there's a whole body of law, antitrust law. And thank God, I'm very grateful that I represent so many different people, but I want to make sure that I move my, my feet. You know, when I throw a punch, I want to make sure I know how it's going to land. And at least to whatever degree I can, uh, do it as well as possible. So I want to meet with him one more time. I already do have the lawsuit drafted and I'm certain I know what causes of action and how I'm going to play it, but I want to hear from him more details. I want when they read this complaint, this next lawsuit, and I'm taking Brian's idea uh, from the last time we all met up, I'm filing in all, I'm going to name everyone. I'm going to name each person in a brand new lawsuit on top of the arbitration that you already have going on, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, I'll just tell you now, it's a quick update. The, the judges' selections have now been submitted, uh, and Triple A is processing because I sent them a list of all of the arbitrators that I wanted. You know, my plus people, you're allowed to strike up to 25 names that they give you. So I went through each resume and asked people on listservs who we like, who we don't like, whatever. I sent them my selections. Toyota sent them theirs, and they're still processing it. We should uh, get an update by tomorrow that God willing, you know, each person, hey, you've been assigned this judge, this judge, this judge, and then the party really starts. Um, so I, I also threatened in my follow-up email, I said I would do this two phone calls ago to you guys. I threatened AAA, the arbitration company. I said, hey, if we don't get this moving, uh, I'm going to go to the federal judge and I'm going to say this 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 is this is nonsense. So that just keeps the feet to the fire and Toyota paid $200,000 to keep it in arbitration. And their heads are going to spin when we file on top of that an antitrust lawsuit. Also to Brian's point, I researched what other entities we could sue because Toyota's big strength here is that they have you all locked into an arbitration agreement, which means that it's out of court, which means that it's not as public, which means that discovery is less. So I can't bother them as much for depositions, for documents, et cetera. So they're comfortable that even the antitrust claims, uh, they're going to have to move it to, to they're going to be able to move it to arbitration. But guess what they can't do? Yeah, so who can't move you to arbitration? True Zero can't move you to arbitration. I went on True Zero's website and they advertise still to this day, <laughs> fueling only takes five minutes. Well, that's just false, right? It's just false. So we're going to be able to sue the fueling distribution network as well. And they can't compel you to arbitration. That's going to make things very messy. I contemplated also since we last spoke heavily suing Gavin Newsom, his administration, in the state of California. And I think that there's room for it. I definitely know in my gut that they are guilty, that they're liable. Uh, they gave away over $100 million and it's all false. I, I got a call from this guy uh, yesterday. I, I speak to someone about this case, I mean, every hour, <laughs> really. But I got a call from this guy yesterday and it's just like, He's he's almost 80 years old. He owned a Lexus and then he owned another Lexus and he owned another Lexus before that. He goes to the Santa Monica dealership, the dealership that I went to to pretend to buy a Mirai. 
uh, and where Brian got his Mirai. So he goes there. He this is a sweet older gentleman, retired guy, usually buys a Lexus, loves the Toyota brand. Like all of us know, the Toyota brand's really great. That's why the first person that called me with this case, I thought they were crazy. I was like, there's no way Toyota's doing this. Fine. He goes there. They sell him the car. He doesn't get all the rebates. He paid 60 grand for, for his car, for his MSRP. He tries to use the car uh, at the wood, and then he tries to fill it up at the Woodland Hill station. It never works, right? He There's a number to call and he calls the number. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll send someone over there. He waits like 15, 20 minutes each time. No one ever, never ends up coming. And then the next time he goes, it's still broken. So they obviously never sent the guy to fix it. So he's like, I got to get out of this car. This car doesn't even, this car doesn't work. And he drives up the hill. He lives in Topanga Canyon, goes to the Santa Monica dealership, says, I want to trade it in. They go, yeah, sure. We'll give you 10 grand for it. So he's upside down 50 grand on this car that is just a paperweight sitting there collecting money uh, for Toyota. Um, and, and that price drop, that's the next frontier. So I saw another law firm filed a case um, and they they literally copy pasted my, pre, my first lawsuit, um, which is fine. It's public, but no one is working this antitrust angle. No one has this expert that used to own the hydrogen station. And this stuff really, really matters. I also asked people to, to do flyers. Um, if you can, I'm not trying to make it taxing or problematic. It's, it really helps having more, the more cases, the, the, the more heat I can turn on Toyota. So having more people, it just makes it, it makes it much better. Obviously I gain from it there's no way around that. But, you know, I read this quote once, you don't go to the bakery and expect the baker to make a cake for you because he loves you. You know, he's trying to eat dinner too. So I'm in this obviously to win this too, right? No, no question about it. But, but it happens to be the difference I think between me and the baker is I used to represent car companies. Okay. I know their tricks and I'm extremely passionate. I'm from California. And I think that what they did is just totally screw over Californians and lie to Californians. That old guy that I was telling you about, his name is Jamie. Jamie, sweetest old man ever. He told me, he's like, I would never have bought this car if I knew it was worse for the environment than a gas car, right? People just don't know what hydrogen is. I was telling this case, the, the office manager here, the guy runs off. He's like, oh, so you can't put a, a charging port for this car at your house. I'm like, yeah. no, you can't. Not only can't you, hydrogen, and this guy was explaining this to me. This guy was explaining this to me. Hydrogen, a hydrogen station is like 10,000 times more complicated than gas. And basically what Toyota did from his perspective is they built, they built the car first and then they're trying to make the hydrogen stations after. Like they first designed this car and then they're making the hydrogen stations. They knew, they know it's failing. They know it's failing now. We sued them in Denmark. Uh, as of 2023, there's zero hydrogen in Denmark, but there's hundreds of Marais just stranded there. So they've done this before in other countries, in Germany too. Uh, and they know that this thing was going to fail. They knew it all along. Now, the thing that I wanted to have for you by this time was to give you all a draft of the lawsuit. God willing, I'll get that to you before I go meet with this guy. And I just want more specifics like that guy's story, that older gentleman's story that I told you, it's so powerful. It's so illustrative of what they've done. Each time I talk to people, each time I talk to people, I learn a new nuance of this car, right? I learned two weeks ago that there's an app in the car that's supposed to tell you where you can get hydrogen from. I didn't know that. And that app in the car is not accurate. That's insane. It's just feeding you inaccurate information on the daily. Uh, that is crazy, right? And I didn't I didn't know about the app in the car. Someone else mentioned, I think he might be on the Zoom. I think he's on the Zoom. He mentioned to me that, um, oh, J Jamie is on the Zoom. <laughs> well, I won't, I shouldn't blast him. I'll put him on blast. But anyhow, um, someone else mentioned to me that the Apple Play never, never, never works in their car. Okay. Now, I wouldn't take on a Lemon Law case that Apple Pay doesn't work, right? But there are thousands of lawyers in California that would sue a company just for that one reason, that the Apple Play is glitchy. Okay, so you pile, if I can pile all these things up uh, to Brian's point of last time we spoke, this way the news, because the news is going to get their hands on it. Like I'm going to mention Elon Musk in that lawsuit. I'm going to try and put in a lot of buzzwords to get the mainstream media focus, right? We've gotten the auto blogs talking about it. We've gotten other smaller sub stacks. 
I want to blow this thing out of the water. And I think that an antitrust lawsuit with 200 named plaintiffs on the face of the complaint with very detailed allegations of some very nefarious activity by Toyota, I think this could be the thing that brings them down. Final point, I think I mentioned this last time. We got a guy in the military. He gave me the green light now to file his claim. He cannot be compelled to arbitration. So they'll be stuck in court, at least for one case that will enrich the value of all of our cases. But with Brian's idea of including the other folks in the fuel now and uh, suing the true zero type of people, that will also speed things up and enrich the value of the cases because they can't compel you to arbitration. Uh, so that being said, let me address some of the questions that have that have gone in the chat. And then I wanna turn the floor to all of you to ask me questions and to uh, just give me status updates and other, and other details. Uh, the app tells you where, that's funny. The app tells you where gasoline is. Sometimes the app doesn't work. Okay, no questions. So if anyone has any questions, uh, we we I'd love to hear them. Doesn't, it could be about anything really. I mean, obviously related to this case. Brian, what, what do you got? One question, um, does anybody, has anybody, track or is there a way to track the days that there is fuel and there's not fuel for example you know periodically i'll look and i'll do a video to myself this is hey look this is such and such a date <clears throat> there's no stations around me that that that's working this is the second day in a row or you no know, because that you know pictures and compelling stats look would be cool like for instance there's in a seven mile radius in santa monica there happens to be five thousand mariah owners those 5,000 Mariah owners experienced 17 out of 30 days of not being able to get fuel or something. I, I don't know the numbers. I'm making this shit up as I talk to you, but I'm just wondering if there's a way to track that. If I'm sure uh, we may get uh, those. Ryan, this is Roman. Uh, I emailed the Jason. There is a report uh, from the state of California that actually gives you the report of how many days the, there was the hydrogen stations problems. It's, it's all available through the EPA website on the, California, uh, through the California EPA website. If you just Google it, and I did re email that Jason as well, uh, the report, if he, he looks through the, my emails, he probably can find the link to the reports. I, I sent him a screenshot as well. It just gives you how many times and why the shell came out and said, no, we don't want to do this. And that was like the big, because they're getting credits for this. They're getting big, big credits for building those stations. That's, I think those numbers would be compelling to know. Cause I mean, look, if for anyone who's in that, like I live in Marina del Rey up, up my Westchester, that two zero has been out for months. I think it's going to stay out. And I, I mean, it, it's just compelling. It's, it's compelling. I mean, as well as stories, you know, I can tell you that I went down, there's a place going off the 405 going um, to the South Bay where a le they, they brag that there's a, from the pump, there's actually pipes to go right to the pump. There's there's five cars in front of me. You had to wait 20 minutes per car. I mean, it's just like it was insane. People were right in there. I mean, I met two people ended up like asking each other out on a date. I guess that's cool if you're single and you, you know, I guess there's a positive some silver lining, right? Two single people met each other, but that's how ridiculous it is. So uh, anyway, I have the like compelling. Um, I know that I live literally three blocks from an Iwatani station and another half a mile from another Iwatani station, they've been closed for like a year, a year and a half. Like they haven't even worked at all. So I don't know what's going on with that. If Toledo's getting credits for those, I mean, again, compelling, compelling for us. Um, the thing, the only thing I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if it makes sense, not just to maybe Sue Gavin Newsom. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've, I've been debating whether it makes, if there's someone that we know we can write to maybe a local Congress person. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I just got to figure out who the person is that's in Santa Monica and bring it to their attention because maybe they care about, it, especially during election years and, you know, things like that. You know, I hate to say I'm certainly not a Republican, but this seems like maybe something that the, Republicans would get on because they're, they're happy Newsom is being sued or because, you know, they're, they're anti-green or whatever. Maybe there's, I, I was actually thinking the other day of when I have some off time to try to explore that angle, see if there's, if there's some Californian that's been against it and we can, we can, and they have, they have a, you know, some sort of 
political. So Anne, Anne Thomas, who's, I believe he's, he's, I believe Anne's on the Zoom. So Anne sent me, there's a Senator Josh Newman. Josh Newman owns Mirai. Um, I think that might be a good target. Yeah, Absolutely. he does own a Mirai. And he said there's two other people in uh, the uh, state legislature that own them now too. So can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. So then, but but I think Brian, I think you're. I think we should. I think we should pursue all avenues. I think that the the senator angle. I'll look into that. Um. I'll look into that, and then also Josh Newman. I I haven't had a chance to do other angles quite yet because I've been really investing in trying to put together the best like antitrust lawsuit together. Someone mentioned in the chat. Uh, I think it's Jose that you posted that someone else filed a class action. Yeah, like I said, that guy literally copy pasted my thing, and he's not. He's gonna get compelled to arbitration. He's not gonna get very far. We're we're gonna have at least one guy that squeaks past, and we're gonna sue other people that'll get us past arbitration. Um, Jason, I know you said no, but uh, have you looked into the? I know you said shell. We cannot sue the shell, but uh, shell was planning to build fifty of those stations. And many Toyota, uh, you know, when I was buying the car, they told me, hey, Shell is going to build more and more station. And based on that, I actually bought the car. You know, like, oh, this is future. You know, Shell is promising that they're going to build more stations. You know, it's a good thing, you know. And I know you said no, but is it possible to go after the Shell or no? Brian, what do you think? I still think no. Brian, what do you think? So, no, and 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 I, I here's what I don't want to do. In my opinion, again, this is not my case, but my thought is, I don't want to, I don't want to put the blame on somebody else and give Toyota an out, and where to Toyota gets to say, "See, it's not our fault; it's it's Shell's fault." What I want to say is, I went into this, I went into this sales room, and the salesman told me, "This is what Toyota is telling us," when they knew it wasn't true. I want to perpetrate the fraud on, on Toyota. Shell is perfectly within its rights to decide if it doesn't want to do something. But if Toyota knew about this ahead of time and didn't tell its customers, the fact that it's still selling 2024s at 55000 that's the juice. My one suggestion um, that I thought of for tonight was what would maybe be interesting is if we can do, and I'd even run like subgroups, meaning I would be interested in my universe, which means because maybe the people that bought the car from Santa Monica, we could have a focus group and get together and we can talk about what they all did to us. I bet that there's a certain sales in there that they all, you know, one of the salesmen hate us, hate the Mirai because my issues may not be the same as the guys in Sacramento. But if we can get together in groups and kind of powwow together, I'm not I'm not saying we're dividing each other up, but we should tell our stories and maybe. Say, this is what Santa Monica did. And because we have an advantage that I know that I can go through the experience of Santa Monica. We know at the station that they take us to. We can all say Eddie. And when I say Eddie, you know which salesman that is, right? We know that, that they've got three salesmen that got the car. We know that we've talked to certain people. Our experiences are similar, maybe different. Like, I don't have, you know, we all have the experience that we all have to get on the 405 and drive up somewhere else to get it. I don't have... I don't have the experience for the, 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 the people in Sacramento. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I just don't have that. And I would love to have a powwow with my people. Okay. That's, that's the next step. So, okay. Next steps is me filing. I'm going to file this big, big antitrust claim, but it doesn't matter. We're going to have to keep it fluid, keep it organic. Absolutely. Brian, you're a billion percent right. right? It's like Longo Toyota, Santa Monica, Orange. Uh, there's a few massive ones that that like i just keep hearing their names over and over again and varying degrees of of a dublin toyota yep yep uh i can just name these off the top i think i know all the toyota dealerships uh yeah we're gonna okay me and jsl are gonna organize by dealership and then have separate zooms so that we can get even more granular more detailed uh and and that is a brilliant idea brian thank you so I, I have a question jason this is Talk jerry perez hello can you hear me yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. This is Jerry. I have two Mirais, a two, 2018 and 2019, and I'm unable to use them given that it's almost a dollar per mile to use the car. And the value of the car is one fourth of what it was when I bought it. So I'm really stuck. And they're writing me now to go on arbitration. 
what do I do? Do I go on arbitration? Do I refuse to pay for the the monthly uh, payable? Uh, what's the best thing for? I have a meeting with day? Toyota on Wednesday of next week. Not Toyota, but their lawyers. There are some folks that have had some serious credit issues. One person, Kevin Lively. I know he's not on the Zoom, and I know he wouldn't mind me telling his name. Kevin told me. They stopped accepting his payments once he joined, once we filed an arbitration. They stopped accepting his payments. The online portal refused to take his money. He would call them. They refused to take his money. And then, okay, he didn't think much of it. But then he just got hit with a six-month delinquency on his credit, which killed his credit. Um, so I'm going to meet with Toyota on Wednesday and see at a policy level if I can get them to at least agree, look, I mean, this is what I'm going to tell them. I'll just tell you what I'm going to tell them. I'm going to say, if you don't freeze reporting on all these cars, you're just going to make these claims, the value, like go even, like there's going to be a multiplier because now you're talking about Fair Credit Reporting Act violations, which they have done to multiple people already. But I'm going to try on Wednesday to 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 ice them from doing that because they're they're just a big company. They're doing things robotically. So God willing... If I can get them to agree to not do credit reporting on these cars, um, and I, th I I can see them agreeing to that. It's a unique situation, but I can see them agreeing to it. Um, I think that will help you guys, and I think I think it just makes the most sense. So give me until Wednesday, and I'll have God willing, I'll drop more clarity on on that question. But it's a good question, and I'll, a lot of people are asking me that. What do I do? I can't make the payments. Should I? Each situation is different. Do, do whatever you can. This lawsuit, you know, it, 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 it could take 10 months at least before, you know, from today, before we see anything. AAA advertises it takes 10 months per, per arbitration. We're going to get the judges, God willing, by this week, next week early. So 10 months is like the fastest time. Uh, so don't do anything on the hopes that this lawsuit is going to help your life. You know, do what you need to do now and I'll fight for you. No matter what, if you have to sell the car, you still have a claim. If you, you know, if they hurt you more, I'll fight for you even more. I'll just crucify them. That that's actually how I got my start representing car companies. I did Lemon Law against Audi Volkswagen uh, for like a year or two after I defended Hyundai on credit reporting claims. Um, so I am very well versed in that, and and it's a serious problem. So I'm taking it seriously. I hear you, Jerry. I hear everybody else with their questions on that. Give me until Wednesday to get more clarity. Um, I, I, perfect. I, when are you filing, Jason? God willing, by Tuesday. I have the I have the draft, and I'm perfect. meeting with the expert on either Monday or Tuesday. Um, but the meeting with Toyota will happen regardless on Wednesday. Um, and and I'm gonna make a concerted effort to put it on blast to like send it to CNN to send the lawsuit to as many people as I can. I think it's a juicy story. They're like selling this better for the environment lie. Uh, and, and then it's really just hurting people. Um, but yeah, we should, Brian, we should, we, should, we, yeah, we should tag Elon Musk on it. Um, on his Twitter account, I had a quick Elon question. Musk, Elon Musk liked a tweet. So I did a short interview with an energy journalist, but again, these are tiny, like he has an audience, like my podcast, like, you know, like a thousand people are tuning in and it's like his friends and family, you know what I mean? And like, but he posted it, he posted it on his Twitter and Elon Musk, the real Elon Musk liked the tweet that I was in talking about this. So I definitely think that there, there's video of Elon talking about this in 2014. He predicts these lawsuits. He's like, this is, this is the dumbest thing what they're doing. Um, so I'm going to start making social media clips of splicing it with me talking about it and stuff like that. And all these things matter because at the end of the day, I'm trying to get you guys out of the situation. I'm trying to get the, trying to get you guys money, your money back and get you out of these cars. Uh, so all the pressure we could use is going to help. Um, and, 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 yeah. Who is our Brian, what are you saying? I, I, I apologize. I just, I don't remember. Um, do we have an arbitration? So who is our contract with? It, with Is it to Toyota Financial? Is it Toyota North America? Or is it, does it not matter? Because the arbitration agreement puts groups them all together. Groups them all together. And it's with Toyota Financial Services, but it's with all their affiliates too. Got it. Okay. Um, I love, I love the idea of filing a uh, antitrust claim on top of the arbitration. I think that that's going to make their head spin. I think it's going to really grind their gears, but they're not going to want to stop the arbitration track. 
because they've invested so much in it and that's their best path. They're going to just try and fight me in federal court, but it's going to start getting really taxing for their lawyers uh, and then their bill uh, on this. And they're going it, to it's going to force them to come to head with what's going we- on here. Do we have a 17200 claim? Is that part yeah, of it? Of course, of course. Because that's <laughs> interesting. I'm thinking the damages that we we get from that would be would be interesting in and of itself. Well, antitrust triples the damages, as does Lemon Law, which I'm suing when I when I do the antitrust. I'm also doing an implied warranty uh, failure. I'm saying that it was implied when you got the car. So uh, this this implied Lemon Law claim. This is also new. I'm doing that against True Zero. So even though they're not in privity of contract with them, it's still part of the purchase that you guys made. You guys thought that this would work and it didn't. And they're advertising to you that it would. Um, I think it has legs. So we'll see. We'll see how far I can push that one. Um, did, did, did True Zero, did do we know, did True Zero and Toyota do any sort of co-op advertising together or... I couldn't find much online about that. I think Toyota was really careful on a corporate level to not make it obvious how in bed they are with each other because of how little I'm seeing. But I do see a lot of mirrored language, like from what Toyota says to what they say. And I'm sure once we press them in discovery, which we're going to be able to do in more ways than one, uh, I'm sure we'll we'll be able to uncover some some things. Someone's saying True Zero is the real villain. I don't know why True Zero would be the real villain. They're not the deep pockets. They're not the largest car. They're not the deep pockets. It's it's Toyota. Toyota is the real. That's why I don't want to. If we bring in the state of California, it'll be great for my career. If I sue Gavin Newsom, I might actually really make the news for a really long time. This guy's going to make a presidential run. It'll be a harassing thing for him. He He's guilty. He is guilty. Make no mistake. He is absolutely, he's not an idiot. He knows how stupid this hydrogen is it was never clean energy and he's just giving away a hundred plus million dollars to these greedy corporations that are just pocketing the money or who knows what they're doing definitely not helping you guys um he's definitely guilty but if i sue the state of california you guys jamie's going to be 90 years old by the time we by the time we finish this case hey jamie's jason, gonna be 90 years old. jason that was me i'm robert for dan uh about true zero and the reason i said that is because all of us have the issue with True Zero. They were the first ones to start spiking the price of the fuel. Uh, they're the ones that if we're sitting there half hour, an hour, two hours to try to get fuel, we're not able to get fuel from them. Uh, for for us, as far as the supply side of it, they uh, you're right. True, uh, Toyota is ultimately responsible for selling the cars, but True Zero has been 100% behind our pain. Look. The thing that I'm meeting this guy for on Tuesday, he told me that True Zero is owned by some parent company that owes money to Toyota. That's what he said. And this guy is extremely credible. So that's why I'm holding off on the lawsuit. Because if he has, even if if he just tells it to me and explains it to me more, he's he's been on the road. So I couldn't meet with him again recently. But if he just explains it to me in more detail and I put that out there, that's enough. Um, and and you, you you might be right. You might be totally right. Uh, TZ might I mean, be totally just, villain. Just on our side. I mean, as far as if you're asking what we see every day, when I go, when I'm going to work and I'm half an hour late for work every time I try to fuel because the pump is always down, I try to call to true zero. Nobody's ever there. They say they'll somebody call you back. They never call you back. You go the next day, the pump's still down. True <laughs> zero is the one that that for us, at least for myself, um, I, I Tawani, I Tawani was supposed to be in San Ramon. They were supposed to be open. Of course, that place is never open, even though it shows on the on the map it is open. And the reason they do that is so that they won't give you a rental car. So that yes, yes, that and then I may have been Brian or someone else mentioning that they are they're getting the tax credits or whatever some kind of by keeping these things going keeping these things open so that that dovetails it's not it's not really open even though it says it's open for like maybe 15 minutes a day let me let me i want to make sure everyone gets a chance that wants to talk can talk oliver has a very interesting point that i want to i want to give him the floor for just a minute here well jason thank you so much for the update i'm sure all my peers here are also of the same sentiment um I've, uh, you know, reached out to my local news, definitely making progress. You know, they, they asked me to send me pictures of the car. Thank God. My question to you is as follows. 
what do you what can we do and we i say me and, and my you know my my peers here to you know expedite things to help to help uh, grow things and to help maximize what's rightfully deserving you know to, to us that's a really good question thank you so i i touched on this before if we have more the more people we have then they'll have to listen more and it will we're stronger together we'll have more control if we have a group that's i see brian nodding his head if we have a group of people and it's like we are we are the customers like they can't hide there's no we're, we're all here we're saying we're unhappy and if that number grows and we file the lawsuit that puts them on notice that this is a problem you know they can't say oh we didn't know it's just a few people the more people we have the more it increases your case value from my perspective i i don't want to be accused of the whatever i'm i i just logically and and brian's also a lawyer and a client so he has a great vantage point on this but i do think that that's actually <laughs> accurate which is why I asked if if you want to do flyers, uh, do a flyer. I'm not trying to, again, make it taxing. I'm not trying to give you more stress on this all, as, as much as you. No, don't hand out flyers in front of the Toyota dealerships. I don't need someone from Jap Japan coming to try and find you guys. Let's not get too aggressive. Seriously, don't do anything. I don't want anyone to do anything silly or, or, or but like, but I do think that these things help. And the more people we have, the more power each of us have. Like, I casted a wide net. I found this military guy. That one lone soldier is going to increase the value of everyone's case by a significant amount because he's not going to be able to compel to arbitration. Each person has a very different compelling story. Jamie's story, super compelling. It's very bite-sized, very relatable. Like different people have different strengths. Each person's case. I have details on all of you guys. I mean, I'm keeping track. I'm very passionate about this. Yeah, if you post about it, and send people so that this way we're able to funnel more clients. Well, think about how much more negotiating power if we're all together and we have a thousand people, then Toyota better listen to us or we're going to bend them over a barrel backwards, whatever the expression is. So thanks, Oliver. Any other questions? Hey, Jason, hey, Jason no. can I say something? Can you hear me? Please. Yeah. Uh, it's me, uh, Glenn Flower. Hey, um, I don't know if you already uh, heard this uh, information that um, every time, like, if the gas station is in Jaegu is out, then you're going to call the customer service. Uh, they ask you a lot of questions, like, you know, um, you check your uh, gas card, if, when was the last time you filled up your gas? And me, I travel 108 miles a day from home to work, to Francis, so every day I have to fill my gas. And if the station is down, and then I ask them for a rental, and usually the, the uh, what do you call that? They said that we cannot approve you because you just put the gas today, even though I filled the gas yesterday. So my point is like, if you fill the gas yesterday, it's gonna show up today. So they deny me because of that. I said, no, I did not put a gas today. I put the gas yesterday. But it said, no, and our system shows that you put the gas today. They said, no, it's not. So it's not only that happens to me one time, but a lot of times. So. That's absolutely huge. And that goes to Brian's point. Like I need to know that in relation, especially to the dealership you were, because if that corresponds to a lie that they told you about having more readily available fuel, there's been a lot of people that are having different issues also with getting reimbursements and things like that. So you're not alone. And we're going to address that issue, but thank you for, that's a new, see, that's a new thing I didn't know, right? I didn't know that some days it reflects the reimbursement relevant information on the next day. And then that discredits you. I did not know that. I I, I couldn't have known that information. So it's really helpful. Um, and, and yeah, we're going to implement though. That's, I, I'm going to start keeping a, a thread of all the different things in an Excel sheet of who had what problems. And I do think that the breakout groups with the dealership is, is very, uh, very, very helpful. Momo, you have a question. Yeah, I was, uh, hey, I live in the Bay Area and then um, I was looking at True Zero and Port of Oakland. So they have like uh, separate pumps for heavy duty trucks that have a contract, exclusive contract to fill up with them. And they're paying uh, 590, 565 a kilogram. So it's a 700% like increase. And when I was talking to one of the employees, he explained to me that they have a, a sole contract with them and um, they're working on getting a price down maybe by the end of the summer. 
That's think, nuts. Yeah, Did anyone of, else know about that? That that commercial yeah. hydrogen is cheaper, and it's not like and diesel. Look, it's yeah. the same thing. And I tried and I tried to fill up at their pumps <clears throat> when I put my card in, whether it was the Toyota fuel card or my personal card. The price jumps up to fifty three dollars a kilogram. Can can you wow. can you can you email I videos? Me? I Take think video. we talked, Momo. I think we talked about that. Yeah. Can you email me a video of this? Yeah, I'll send you an email. I'll I, I got you. I'll send you an email. And it's crazy, you know. Um, I think please, that's the main please, thing. Please uh, don't forget, please. I I know, like, uh, going after the California Energy Commission or, or California State of California is like a big, big case, you know, but. I, there has to be something going on, you know, where they're basically the government, you know, our tax dollars, which is feel like funding these programs are going right back into their pockets. That's basically what's happening, you know, 100 percent. And it, it might come it might come to a point if Toyota's not playing ball that it just makes sense. OK, let's just go full nuclear and add the state and, you know, try and wreck their relationship with the state. I don't think that it's. They are price gouging. You guys are not the trucking companies, though. I, I, it's it's absolutely insane. Even if they're getting tax incentives for selling hydrogen, what they're doing, I, I don't know if I'll ever figure it out. But what they're doing just doesn't make sense to me. But that's Momo. Please don't forget. Please send me a video if you can that just details that. Because if I show that to a judge, show that to an arbitrator, it's just immediate that they understand. Okay, this is like this is bad acting. I still don't want to sue the state. I think it'll slow things down. I think it, w- it wouldn't help right. you at all um, because the state the state has their own immunities. They have unlimited money really to fight these things. So even if you get liability on them, it would literally take it all the way. And um, it also changes the nature of the claims. Uh, then Toyota will kind of feel like, okay, the heat's, this is to Brian's point, the heat's not totally on us. The main issue here is Toyota. Toyota's the one that's lobbying, that's lying to the state. But that's another thing that this expert said. He he said he was at a lot of these meetings with senators um, when they were passing bills. And he's he, I've looked at the minutes of meetings and they do detail things. But he said that he said that there were clear misrepresentations in those meetings. So I'm hoping to learn more of these details and I'll keep you updated. But Momo, please, if you can remember to do a video, I would I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I have a couple of videos. They're kind of cut up, but I'll send them to you. Please. Kyle, you had a question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, so, will part of that meeting with the Toyota's lawyers on Wednesday help address that potential issue with Toyota Financial Services rejecting our car payments? Are you also being rejected car pay- paying your car? No, but but once that was but once that was mentioned, that that did become a concern of mine just now. I'll bring it up. Of course. Yeah. That's going to be the focus of that call. I said, I said, I told them, I said, I want to have a call specifically to discuss credit reporting issues. When are you available? They said Wednesday done. So yeah, because I, yeah. Cause I mean that, that, that seems, I mean, are they even allowed to do that sort of thing? I mean, I guess they could do anything. Right. But so I, I we're really in the wild west here. Yeah. They they can't. They're le- obviously no. They're obviously not allowed to do that. I, I I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. If you're referring to not accepting payments, they're obviously not allowed to do that. Okay. They're, right. they're they, not allowed to not accept. If they don't accept payments, then they need to take back the car and not report them. Neg- uh, you know, and refer- not mess up our credit, right? So they really jacked that guy's credit up badly. Um. Anyhow, yeah. I, I like I have okay. other client. Her name is Letitia. I posted about this on LinkedIn. Like. She doesn't speak English. Her daughter's translating every time we're on the we're on the call together. She doesn't speak English. You, you, you think because like some people are like, oh, why didn't they do research on before? She couldn't have done any research. She doesn't speak English. She doesn't know what's going on. There's a Spanish speaking salesperson. That guy probably that guy not probably. Her daughter's saying that he told her a bunch of lies about the car. You know, here's forty five hundred dollars cash from Toyota. It's going to get much cheaper. Da da da. She takes it. She uses up her fuel card. She cannot afford to use her car. Her monthly payment is $650 a month. She's like, my credit's going to die and she can't afford that. She's like the matriarch of her family. So she's killing herself making payments for a car she literally can't use. Um, so I really want to get them to take the heat off the credit stuff. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll let you know what their temperature is on that. Um, you know, do you guys, did you guys, so I had, when I had the, 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 I had the original Mirai. Um, and, and again, the reason I, I got the second one was I, 
I pressed them on it and said, and they said, look, we're going to get more stations. And at the time, I was like, whatever, cool. But I remember, I don't know if anyone else experienced this, but if you remember back in 2019, I believe, there was a forest fire up north. And Toyota actually said, we're out of hydrogen. And it froze everyone's payments for six months. So this is not a new concept to Toyota Financial. They could say, to the extent there's people from this lawsuit, they could either stay payments, um, you know, or whatever. They've done that before. They did it for me when there was a fire up in, remember the Paris, California fire that ripped through everything. Somehow the hydrogen station got involved. Back then, I think Toyota did it because they they felt like it was a great thing moving forward. But I went six months and no payments. I done, I've done that. Um when I represented Hyundai, we've, we've stopped payments. Yeah. They, 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 they have all the control. There's no like, and I'm talking to their lawyer. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I know Anne has questions. We're going to follow up this with, with the breakout sessions. And then that will also have juicier updates. I, I I'm sorry. I didn't have more juicier updates. I also want to, Jamie, I want to come to your house in Topanga. I don't know if you think I'm too weird for that, but I want to start making more media um, with people telling their story, people think that people don't understand this. Like probably there's millions of people that know that never even heard of hydrogen fuel, even in California, let alone understand the nuances of what's going on. The best way humans learn is by story. So I want to create more stories. I want to, if I can't, Jamie happens to live within driving distance of me. I think Brian too, but well, I don't, but at least with Jamie, I'm going to come, I'm going to come to your house to record. And I want to, I want to at least get people on zoom. Timothy, I was going to come to you up North and your mom shout out to Timothy. Timothy is really, Timothy is really the guy that explained all this to me. His mom called me and I just thought his mom was nuts. Um, and then he had to translate what the hell was going on with this Mirai thing. And I don't blame, I don't blame her or me. She sounded very frantic and I wasn't believing her. I was like, there's no way Toyota did this to you. And then Tim explained to me, no, 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 they, they are. <laughs> um, but that, for that reason, we need to make it digestible. I want someone, I want someone to know off the street. I want random people to know, wow, Toyota really did that to you, like to people. I want people to know that. So I'm going to, I'm going to. Sean Hall, I want to make sure. Yeah, people, it's funny. People people feel like they were duped uh, by Toyota and they weren't. So I see iPhone 2 has a question and then I'll let uh, Ann have a, a talk and then we'll, we'll close this one out and we'll follow up with a breakout group update session coming out and which will have very juicy updates because God willing by then I'll have filed this incredible lawsuit and we've done a lot more activity uh, by the next update. So iPhone 2, what's your question? Hey, uh, Jason, this is Azam. We spoke on the phone a couple of days ago. What's up, hey, Azam? Uh, it's very important uh, from a strategy standpoint that we establish a connection between Truth Zero and Toyota. Because put it this way, <clears throat> sooner or later, Toyota is going to use um, Truth Zero as the scapegoat. They will say, hey, they're the bad guys. We're the good guys. They're already doing that. Their answer to our, our mass arbitrations... Uh, I believe I posted it in the Telegram. It the whole thing centers on True Zero. Um, it also centers on blaming the EPA for the mileage thing. The mileage thing is hilarious to me because again, the first people when Tim's mom called me, Tim's mom first person calls me. Oh, it doesn't get the mileage, right? And in my head, I'm thinking to myself, now how the hell do you know what mileage I get? Right? You can't know that. No, there's it's like a very modern car. Like my new Volvo has a reader and tells you how many miles it's getting. So you all don't need to be an expert. You fill up the car, you finish filling up, you look at the thing and you're like, oh, it says 281, you know? And that's what it's saying to you. Imagine what you're actually getting. So yeah. they're going to try and blame the EPA and that's not going to fly, yeah. I don't think. It's it's okay, a dollar a mile now for me. Yeah, yeah, Jerry, yeah, you, you said that and we're all we're all with you on that one. So uh, Alejandro had a question and Peter right. had a question. We got to wrap this up. Yeah, I was wondering, so when how does the mass arbitration work? It, can they go after us after the arbitration or can they sue us individually for suing them or something like that? 
Uh, I mean, anyone's free to sue anyone. That's what makes this country great. And I mean that, by the way, I'm not being sarcastic. You don't invest. Jamie's laughing at me because he thinks I'm he thinks I'm a bastard. But I really think that that was that makes America great. Um, I know that that phrase even has some negative connotation, but I really do believe that because if you're in Russia and you run a successful business, you best believe KGB is going to knock at your door and be like, we are partner now. And you're like, oh, I don't want to be a partner with you. And he's like, well, we kill your family. And it's like, oh, OK, I guess we're partners in the United States anyone can't mess with anyone because there's the there's the court system there's the rule of law so it's a long way of saying that they could sue you for anything but in all of my years of litigation it's only been about 10 i've never seen that and i do not suspect that they're going to sue you at all they're they're going to want this to be done they're going to they're going to want to delay this as long as they can as long as it's not painful for them and then they're going to want to be done as soon as it's going to get painful they are not coming after anyone here that's the beauty of this case also that's why i mean JCell is here. I've also now hired a second uh, paralegal just dedicated to this case because I don't want to lose track of anything. I want to be able to make sure I'm giving it full attention. But the reason that I'm confident that even if I had all 10,000 clients that ever got a Mirai, if I represented all of them, I could do this case because they can't go after you for anything. What what documents do they, they want to take your deposition? No problem. You'll freaking yell at them for seven hours about this car. Well, I don't have anything to hide. Let them take your deposition. What documents do they want? They want your bank statement. Give them the bank statements. Okay, we paid the car. You want the purchase contract? Done. There's nothing else. In, a t in other typical litigation, let's say it's business to business dispute. Oh my God, you could drag it out for years. I want every record of every vendor that ever you talk to about this, that. We don't have that here. We do not have that here, right? It's a very simple case. You sold me a bad car. There's the car. Come get the car, right? There's nothing else here that, that's going to complicate it. I really don't think you have to worry about any exposure. I do not think that they uh, that they that they will come after you at all for anything. I would be shocked. Uh, and if they did, I'm your lawyer. I'm fighting for you. You know, I mean, yeah, that's in, my retain, in my retainer agreement, it does say that that would be a separate case and everything. But I, I really, I really don't think it's going to come to that. I, I really, really don't. I don't think you have to second worry about question that. is, I have to take in my car on Friday, which is tomorrow, because uh, there's the, the the I guess they call it their teammate package, their self driving or whatever. When you have like the top of the line model, has never worked correctly. So I'm supposed to take that in. And they initiated a buyback by me calling them and telling them that. So I'm supposed to take the car in and they're supposed to give me a rental and all that shit to handle all that stuff. But I was wondering, so if they ended up buying back my car, what would happen then? Would it still be part of this lawsuit or not? They initiated a buyback? What do you mean by that? Well, they initiated a thing where I asked them, hey, this never worked. So you guys should buy my car back. So they initiated what they call a buyback procedure. So that's why they want me to take in the car so they could oh. evaluate or whatnot. And then give me a rental. I don't know what that means, but don't rental. sign anything or settle with them without going through me. No, 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 I'm not. What I'm saying is they're just, they just sent it to me saying, okay, we're going to take a look at this. And we initiated a, like a for them to yeah, keep me posted. Keep, keep, me, keep me posted on that. Don't, don't sign anything or settle with them. They're going to try and get away with murder and just buy back the car and be done with you and not give you a dime. They, they owe you money, especially sure. anyone like that's going to it in for them to look at it. Cause that's what they wanted. And then they're just giving me a rental while they have it. I haven't signed anything or anything. I just, all I did was talk to them on the phone and a representative from them called me and said, Perfect. okay, we're initiating this, blah, blah, blah. Just take it in and have it looked at. Perfect. So they, 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 they are liars. They don't have any of the parts in California. Ah, Tim, great. Tim, Tim's mom, Tim's mom. She called me that the seat coils were never stopped turning on. She's like, it's cooking my ass, she's telling me. And I'm laughing my butt off. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make fun of her. I have really good respect for her. I just did a Zoom with her yesterday for an hour to hear out her concerns. I love her. Uh, good, you're giving me a thumbs up sign. But when she's telling me it's cooking her ass, I'm thinking, well, why don't they just replace the heat coils? They can't, right? I, I discern from talking to 20 different people about the heat coil issue, because for some reason that's a recurring issue. Uh, they don't. They can't fix the car here. So they're if anything happens to the car, they'll call it a total loss or they'll they'll tell you to bring it in and then they'll just reset all the fault codes and hope you don't notice. Like that's what's going on here. They they cannot repair this car in California. I'm confident of that. Okay, so so that's still fine for me to just take it in and have them look at it and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you don't sign anything, just don't sign anything. Because because there was someone else where they tried to do a quick settlement deal with on right. one of the clients here. And they, they, they were trying to get away with stuff. Don't, don't, don't sign anything. Keep me okay. closely updated on that. Someone wrote, I do think the dealers may try retribution. They're not going to try any retribution. The dealers don't care. The dealers don't care about this problem. They're, they'll, I promise they'll sell you a car if you come 
anytime. They'll take your money and give you a car. The Toyota picked up the defense. I didn't know how this would play out. Quick story time. I started this, I started my law firm like two years ago now because my dad, the, I don't know if I told all of you this story. I, I love it. I'll say it a hundred times. I love this story so much. Sorry if you've already heard it. My dad got a bill from Toyota for a car he never bought. Thank God it was not a recurring issue, but someone stole his identity. It was just this one instance. Someone used his credit. They shipped him a car. They shipped this fraud store car across the country. The guy never stepped foot in a dealership, didn't put a penny down, and they shipped the car to him. My dad filed a police report and an affidavit and sent it to Toyota. Toyota said, we hear you. You don't owe us any money. But they kept sending him bills. He asked me what to do. I said, just ignore it. They put it in writing. They're not going to hurt your credit. Believe me, they don't want that world of hurt. And he's like, all right, fine. And he keeps calling every time he gets a bill. He's like, guy, stop sending me a bill. They don't listen to him. Then the DMV starts sending him bills for smog, registration, other fees. He's like, these people are not going to listen to me. And I have nothing in writing with them. You got. So I sued Toyota under the California Identity Theft Act case. And in that case, I sued the dealership that sold the car to the fraudster and caused all these issues and Toyota. And in that case, um, they actually split the settlement and defense everything down the middle. So that's what I thought would happen here. I thought because so many allegations in the complaint relate to what the dealer's agents, the salespeople were saying, that Toyota would be like, oh my God, no, screw that. We're not defending those guys. Those guys are bad actors. And I thought it would create a lot more pressure if I started naming all the dealerships and it would be productive chaos. Um, but they just picked up carte blanche. They picked up the whole case. Toyota said, okay, we're just going to handle this, which again makes me think that they know how wrong they are in this situation. Because in the other situation, they were like, no, screw this dealership. And they really threw that dealership under the bus. I mean, they did not give a damn. They were not helpful to the deal. It was very interesting. Um, and that, that that case, that settlement helped me propel this this whole my whole law firm. Um, do I need to worry about paying back part of the rebate if I sold the car less than 30 months? I don't know enough about that yet. I wouldn't worry about it yet. I'm fighting for you to make sure that they tear up the whole contract, right? That's the goal. The goal is to get you back your car payments, tear up the contract and pay us so much money that you guys are made whole so that my gigantic uh, contingency fee doesn't eat into it. That's the goal, right? That's the goal. So, I, I, and part of it would be to make sure that they don't, uh, they don't make you eat the rebate at all. Um, California rebate, not Toyota. Yeah, my, my goal would be to pin t Toyota to the rebate uh, and not have any issues for you. But we're a bit early. We're a bit early on, on fine tuning those details. But I'm very cognizant of that issue. More, th more than one person has brought it up. I'm very cognizant of that issue. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's part of the reason I bought a car. You know, I can get uh, some rebate money on it. And this is, I mean, it's part of the deal. But if I sell the car, you know, before that, um, I don't know if the agency will come after me and ask me to pay back the, the operated I, I do not think so. I don't yeah. think, I don't think that, I think they have much bigger fish to fry than get back their hydrogen BS rebate that they gave you in the first place. I just don't see And then, that. yeah, are there any suggestions how I should sell the car? I mean, I, I kind of feel bad. I, I do have a couple potential buyers and take a look at the car. They, they kind of enjoy the car, but I, I kind of, at the same time, I kind of feel bad, like hard selling the car talk them into buying the car. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm the bad guy here if they take over the car. Um, so are there any suggestions I should, uh, I should do or so I should probably avoid? Hell no, I don't have any suggestions for you. I am not a car salesman, sir. I am a lawyer. I got nothing. I'm not That's even right. making a joke. I will not advise you on that even if you paid me, okay? I don't know anything about that. You want me to advise you on selling this absolute lawsuit of a car? <laughs> Are you out of your mind, Quentin? I would not, no, thank you. Oh, yeah, we're in the and best he... situation here. You know, guys stuck in- No, no, totally. I am obviously trying to be funny on some level. My, my real yeah. suggestion to you would be to just post it on the Telegram chat and then maybe someone that's gone through something similar will have some new okay. idea. I, okay. I truly, I truly don't have any good advice for you there. I. To me, this loss, this car is just a lawsuit. So for me to tell you, go sell it in any shape or form would be uh, very questionable on my end. So I'm not going to do right. that. All right. Quinn, right. Yeah. Me, yeah. Brian, you, you didn't see me, but as you were talking, I was putting my hands over my ears. I don't even want to hear what you're saying. If you actually sit back and think about why the two of us are freaked out by your comment, just think about it for a little bit. 
Um, think about why we are suing on a lawsuit based on fraud and misrepresentations. And then think about what you just said to us. That's why I was like this. And he was like, hell no. It was like- it, Just instinctually, Brian, the lawyer is like, ah, 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 I didn't hear anything. But, if, but the thing is, this is what's also interesting. When Timothy and his mom called me the first time, she sent me her whole file. She overnighted it to me, right? This whole freaking file. I went through every scrap of paper and I was sure because I consulted with mentors of mine before taking on this case. I was like, for sure, there's a piece of paper that's like all bold, all caps. That's like hydrogen is like unreliable right now. Don't don't ever sue us for this. And they never put that in. So, Quentin, I'm not giving you advice. But if you would do that, OK, that might help you avoid some liability. If you have some very clear disclaimers about the car, not that I'm giving you advice. I would never give advice on how to sell this car. But if I was Toyota, I promise we wouldn't be in this situation. I would. No one reads anything that they're signing these days. I'm a lawyer. You think I read any of the terms and conditions? I don't read anything. Okay, who has time for that? That's insane. So I would have clicked the box that says I can't sue them because of hydrogen and done. But they never put that in there. So. Yeah, if I am lucky enough to sell the car 10 grand, I still owe Toyota $20,000 at this point. It's I insane. It's insane. Yeah. It's total fraud. It's total fraud, Quentin. I'm, I'm fighting yeah. for you. I, I'm not, I might have just made a joke about, I'm not joking about this case. This case is the Super Bowl for me. This is the most All important right. thing I've ever done in my entire life for so many reasons. Someone else, someone just, someone just uh, XV in the uh, direct message me. Sorry, yeah. maybe I shouldn't have. Hello, uh, XV this is Anyways, how much the DMV is charging? $715 for annual license fee. Yeah, that's Gavin Newsom. OK, they passed the costs of this craziness that they're just giving money to Shell, Hyundai and Toyota, literally those three companies. You're paying for it. You're paying for it with these crazy DMV registration fees. I mean, I'm telling you, they're they're absolutely culpable. They're absolutely culpable. There's no question about that. Um, yeah, nine hundred dollars for registration. Yeah. I, 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 I am I am actually floored with what's going on here. I, I'm st I, my mind is spinning. I have no idea what they're thinking or why they're doing this. My only thing that I have so far now is stuff that we were talking about. They're a thirty billion dollar year company. They they're getting they're getting paid by this for California. They figure they'll break even with some lawsuits and they'll try their hand at some hydrogen. But we're gonna make them pay. They're not gonna break even. I'm gonna try and make them pay as much as I can. Um, okay, Peter, you had a question, and then we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, real quick, uh, if. If for some reason you have a sense towards the end of this suit that they're not going to settle for what we're asking for, do you have a contingency like we get uh, free fuel cards to you know to equal the cost of the, uh, the value of the vehicle? Someone else or asked anything, me that. Anything like someone that. else asked me that. I do not plan for that type of situation. My plan okay. is to try and make these guys cry and pay more money than they expected. My plan is not to figure out how Good. to get you guys fuel card at the end of this well i i, I don't either i don't want that either I yeah just, no yeah. hell no they can take their fuel cards and and you know what i'm gonna say okay no, so no you're pretty confident that's good that's good news i mean i'm I, as confident as i'll ever be i'm, I'm going in guns blazing i i, I don't I, this case to me if you walk into this is always my test if you if i can explain this to my mom the second i take <laughs> on a case no seriously if, if i take a case and i can't be confident that if i went to starbucks or someone who's not a lawyer and convince them of my side, I won't take the case. This yeah. is one of those cases where I think 11 out of 10 people will agree with what. Right. Asked. So, Got you. And so I don't know how that plans out. I'm not trying to, I know this is being recorded. You there have a no ball. guarantees. There are no yeah. guarantees for how this shakes out. I have no idea. Right. The Japanese government might dig their heels in and want to do who knows. I have no idea. Right. I'm, but I'm putting my, my name out there. I'm putting my neck on the line. I'm trying to fight. This is what I'm eating, breathing and sleeping. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do this for you guys. And the last one is like with the sign that we post at the gas station, we're allowed to do that with that sign up. Yeah, no, that's a first amendment free, right? Yeah. You're allowed okay. to do that. All right. Hell, Thank yeah. You. Hell yeah. You do. I would, I would bet that when they have their technician, you know, that finally ever gets yeah. there, they do, that technician <laughs> might be like, ah, I'm going to take that down. That might happen. Right. But you're totally within your rights. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. You're within your rights. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I would just oh. add one one thing. I mean, look, I've, I've been litigating. This is all I do is litigate. I've been doing it for 23 years. And I know for a lot of you, this may be the first time and it's stressful. And, and we both understand it because, you know, both of us speak to clients all the time. We're this is still the beginning of the process. So, you know, he's not thinking in terms, I want to speak for him, but we don't think in terms of 
do we have an out strategy already? Right. We're, we're not, we're not there. We, we're not in this to get you guys a free fuel card, right? This is, he's putting his name on the line, right? He's doing a lot of this for free at this point. And, you know, this is kind of, this is his, his, his moment to make his bones. And that's how the lawyers that you see later on that, that, that get bigger, the Johnny Cochran's of the world, whatever, they all start off, they believe in something and they fight for it. Right. So, so your lawyer is not at this point thinking about, about the negatives, you know, and I, and I get it. I hear people saying things like, Hey, are they going to sue us? I can tell you that they'd have to go to arbitration. There's something called an anti-slap motion. I've never lost one. They get hit with one because again, it's your right as a human being in California and America to petition the courts for something. This is not something that's bad faith. They'd have to go through such a process that they'd act and they'd lose it. And when they lose under slap motion for trying, if they try to sue us back, they'd actually lose money in the process. It's written right into the statute. So um, I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm just saying, you know, it is a process. That's why these calls are good so that we can together kind of gain confidence and strength in numbers. But, you know, we're, we're gunslingers and we're not thinking of getting you guys a fuel card, right? That's, that's, that's a loss for us. We're looking at destroying a company and making a name for you guys. You can walk in and say, I took on Toyota and, and I made something myself. So I just wanted to make that point. I, I understand. I hear some people worry. Don't be worried or if you just call us or whatever, because we're in it for a lot more. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you for the kind words. Nothing extra to add off of that. Seriously, I'm in it to fight. We're just loading up the guns at this point. Yeah, it's early in the process. Thank you for putting that perspective, Brian, all of it. Thank you all. Th I, I learn every time I talk. I know, Anne, you had questions and, and we didn't get to them. I'm going to talk to you privately off so we can kind of keep these uh, contained. And we're going to follow up very soon with some more breakout rooms, the breakout uh, dealership support things, and I'll have more updates for you. But just know that I'm fighting for you. And, and really, thank you, Brian. Thank you all for, for your time and attention. And, and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Have a, have a good night. We'll be in touch. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Happy night.